And welcome to this Friday night baseball here at Gill Stadium. My name is Kyle Heavey from Manchester Public Television. It is a pleasure to be with you on this evening for the Division One matchup between the Central Little Green and the Winnicott Warriors. Both teams have had an interesting season to get all together so far as the Little Green come into the game four and seven, while the Winnicott Warriors come to this game 12 and four. But basically it's been a reversal of ways as Central had started the season 0-6, while Winnicott had started the season 8-0. But Winnicott comes in this game losing the last three, while Central has been winning three of their last four. So it should be a very exciting evening here. Game two of a Friday night doubleheader on this May 21st. And I am glad to be here for this Division I matchup. Starting in pitching for the Manchester Little Green is Griffin Loge. Catching is David Hood. At third base, we have Brett Bennington. At second base, Tyler Krabalowski. At shortstop, we have Dylan Schroff. At third base, we have Robert LeBear. Out in left field, Andrew Houghton. In center field, Jake Bashan. And out in right field is Thomas Mulholland. Leading off for the Warriors will be Joe Allen, the designated hitter. He is replacing the pitcher who will not be pitching at all today. And that is no other than Mr. James Jason Pinosalt. So sorry the camera had gotten away from me. I didn't realize that. I kept bumping it. And now we'll see what we have here as the sun starts to set, clouds to the west here, so it's gonna help out because uh, it was a pretty bright sunshine. I was worried about the first baseman's as they were gonna have an issue throwing, but we'll see what Loge can do here. First pitch, called strike. Good way to start the game here for the little green. We had a good game one here. West winning 10 to nothing over Conval. A seven inning, seven run first inning helped the Blue Knights, and now we'll see what the Central Little Green can do. Try to make it a couple wins here in Manchester tonight. And fouled off. That makes Griffin Loge up on the count, one and two. It's been an interesting season all around with the uh, the weather and tonight to have uh, as humidity is coming in a little bit, but overall it's uh, not bad. Another fouled off. I had the pleasure of seeing the Little Green take down the Concord Crimson Tide up in Concord on Monday, but they were not able to win on Wednesday. And now we got a fly ball out to left field, right field, excuse me, and it's going to one hop and come down for a leadoff single for Allen here. So good job by the Warriors, who have a really big team. I was here when they walked in, and I was very impressed with the size that they have here as Cam McDonald. Don't know if he likes McDonald's or not, but uh, could be an old McDonald. I'm not sure, but either way, we'll see what he can do for the Warriors. The umpire talking to the bench as they were up on the railing. Apparently the umpire found that to be obstruction in some way, and now we get the first pitch to McDonald who does the same thing, but it's gonna go over to Maple Street side, hits the bullpen, and again, we have, basically they're hitting it out to right field. Thomas Mulholland better be ready here as they are either behind in their swings or they're aiming it that way. But uh, first pitch strike here, as we'll see what Allen can do. Allen is taking off, and Hood is not able to get a clean pitch and an easy stolen base for Allen. And now, I'm going to cut it. Really doing work here. Start the, start off this game. Loge look back. And now we got a screamer, Vashon, on his horse. See where this lands. That is a home run, which I have not seen here at Gill Stadium. An impressive feat of power here for Cam McDonald. You can call him Old McDonald all you want. It was a joke, but he apparently heard that and took advantage. A crazy, crazy long home run. 
I thought Jake Vashon might have a chance at it, but it went just straight away center. And man, lead off hope, two nothing Warriors lead here. I know that Griffin wants that ball back. Let's see what he can do here. A ground ball fouled to the third base side. I've not seen a home run here in my uh, my tenure with Manchester Public Television in the couple years that I've been uh, covering baseball. So this is a exciting moment for me. I, I actually was confused where the heck the ball actually went, but that's a high fence out there. At least 10 feet and it still made it over. So congratulations to Cam McDonald on his home run here being the catcher. He's obviously ready for a big day. A 2-1 count now to Hunter Chase. Hunter playing shortstop. And he grounds one over to third base. Throw over to first in time for the first out. A good job by Robert LeBaire over to Brett Beddington for the first out for the little green. Count that 5-3. Hayes Wydell, the batter now, the lefty. I really like the uh, Winnicott outfits. They have the white pants, red socks here on Hayes, the center fielder, and uh, the blue and white jerseys. You got the red sleeves and the, uh, the blue body as he couldn't get a, any contact on that swing. As Griffin's coming at him strong. Ball low there. A one one count now. Hayes not usually a, a first name. I think of it more of a last name, but and he gets a hold of one, sends it out in the to the gap. That puts Vash on running towards the fence. It hits the wall and he's gonna have a stand up double. And Hayes Waddle, the center fielder, stands at the fifty yard line with a one-out double with the Warriors already up 2-0 over the Little Green. And Griffin Loge, not the pitcher of choice as Declan Ryan was expected to pitch, but he unfortunately has to deal with a uh, suspension, one-game suspension, for saying some, uh, some things to a teammate that the umpire didn't like. And now a one-out single gets... Hayes over to third base and a tough first inning as that was Drew Wyman who was able to get that single. Ryan Mooney now, the third baseman up to bat now. Mooney number 25. Ball wide, sorry about that ladies and gentlemen, trying to write down all this information and still take care of the camera. Do not try this at home. Mooney takes a step out, looks down at his third base coach, figuring out what the call was. And the pitch now to Loge, he sends it my way. Hits the rooftop, maybe I'll try to get that later on. 2-0 Warrior lead on a Cam McDonald two-run shot to just to the right center fence line. Nearly had its, made its way to JFK Arena. The Coliseum, better known as. And now Loge has two strikes on Mooney. Owen Bateman, the left fielder, on deck if it comes to it. They were trying to get uh, Drew Wyman over to second base. He was running, but a foul ball, another foul ball. Griffin Loge having a lot of pitches here in the first inning. The lights have just turned on here, so we'll see when those really become in play. And now a hit up to the shortstop, not able to make the play over to first. And a 6-3, nice job by Schuf over to Beddington to get that out and to keep the runners at bay at third base. So 
Two outs now, runners at second and third. And now we have Owen Bateman. Batman sounds like his nickname. Swing fouled off into the mitt of Hood. And we have a one strike now. Loge in the windup. Looks the pitch. Low. Looked like it had the chance. Good leap and catch there by Loge to get that. And now. 1-1 one, one pitch, he sends it out. It should be a pop-up out there to left field. And barely handled cleanly by Andrew Houghton. And he gets the third out of the inning. But the Warriors able to get two on the Cam McDonald home run. We'll see what the Little Green can do with their bats. We'll be right back with more coverage of high school baseball from Manchester Public Television. Back here for the bottom of the first inning as the Little Green got to get something going here. Down 2 nothing on a Cam McDonald home run. And we'll see what Andrew Houghton can do versus Jason Penasalt. Excuse me. Houghton able to make that catch there to get out of the first inning and see if he can bring that energy here. Foul tipped into the mitt for strike one. Houghton, also a pitcher for the Little Green. Nickname is AP. He plays basketball and golf as well. And his goal for the season, get to the ship, meaning the championship. We will have that game in a couple weeks here, their first run playoff game against Memorial. And he goes down by way of the K, does AP. We'll figure out the geometry of the pin assaults, and we have one out here on. And Griffin Loge, pitcher versus pitcher matchup here. Hopefully, Griffin can do better than what Andrew just did. As he grounds one up the middle, see if it gets through. And lack of talk between the second baseman and the shortstop allows Griffin to get a single here. Central looks like they have a tough spot. I gotta say, Jason, pitcher for the Warriors, looks pretty strong. He's throwing some heat so far for the first two batters. As Jake Vashon, the center fielder now up. Lefty. As he sends one over, it's gonna be a play to short over to first and not in time. Oh, they did call him out. Boy. Uh, I hate to be a hometown fan. The coach says it all. It's a 3-6-3 double play to end the first inning. And we'll be back as you can just see the, uh, the feeling of the coach and player here. And the Warriors already up 2 nothing. We'll see what they can do as we go to the second. We'll be right back. Griffin Loge back out here for pitching. The Little Green down 2 nothing, And we'll see what happens here with Landon Harris, the second baseman up the bat. The first pitch here, high for ball one. It's easy to criticize the umpires as we just saw from that call, but I'm up here, they're down there. Like they have a little bit better angle, but uh, you can go back and Rewind the footage here, and it definitely looked like he was safe. Strike call there. Now a 2-1 count to Landon Harris. Pitch called strike now, 2-2. Two -two. See Landon just peer over to his teammates like, mm, questionable call. And now pitch, he sends it out to the gap. See if Vashon not able to get it. Bouncing single there. And another leadoff hits here for the Warriors. 
as we'll see what Ryan Eaton can do here. Playing right field is Eaton. Throw over to Beddington. Not in time. Inside pitch, not a strike though. Goes for a ball one. We got a time called as Eaton gets a call down from his third base coach, but now we're ready. Griffin look gets the pitch and sends it out to right field. And now will go for a single, making it easy for Harris to get over to third base. And back-to-back -back singles for the Warriors, making this very difficult for Griffin Loge. Griffin, again, not expected to pitch tonight. The suspension of Declan Ryan was not what we expected, but we already know what the playoff format's looking like for this season, so... This game, consider it like a practice in some ways. The throw over to first, not in time. Beddington does a good job of making sure the ball doesn't get past him. Leadoff hitter Joe Allen, who got a single as well in the first inning. Hood does not throw as easily down to second base as Eaton. And now we have one ball count so far. Called strike. Another strike there. Griffin liking the outside corners. Thank you for anyone that are watching this live on Manchester Public Television. Game for the Bruins Capital Series being played right now. So I understand if uh, don't really have the numbers that compared to the Bruins for uh, people watching, but this should be a good game here. Fouled off. Hood gets the ball, gets it back to Loge. No outs here in the second inning. Runners at the now second and third. Fouled one over the whole entire Valley, excuse me, the uh, Gill Stadium stands. May, probably made its way over to Valley Street, was what I was trying to say. A long at bat here. And he sends one way out to right foul territory. Maholland able to get it. Players tagging the throw. And it's a good one out right there. What a throw from right field. A double play. Unbelievable what we just saw there. Thomas Mulholland able to use his cannon to get the out at home, keeping this a 2-0 game. That will be uh, shown for a long, long time for sure because that was a heck of a throw. And Landon Harris out at the plate. Now there are two outs. Outside pitch. Nine to the throw. Bouncing ball fouls make its way all the way down to the bullpen area here at Manchester Gill Stadium. Cam McDonald, who already has a home run, with a man at third. Fouls one off of Hood, and now he's down in the count, one, two. An unbelievable throw still from Thomas Mulholland. High pitch, nice job by Griffin trying to get him to chase. McDonald, the two spot in the lineup for the Warriors, able to keep it Another foul ball back. Hood gives him a little love, says right there, man, you're close, you're close. He's, you know, doing his thing. Still a 2-2 count. 
Dark clouds coming in. Hopefully the showers are able to stay away. And the ball gets away. He does not see that, and the runner stays at third base. That was an easy way to score a run. Obviously, we know that Hood has a good job of moving. He is the goaltender for the hockey team as well. Proud to see him as work on the ice and on the field here. And now, McDonald sends it out. Not able to get it, it's gonna go for a ground rule double, which will bring in the run. And Cam McDonald doing his thing with the bats. A home run in the second and a double in the, uh, excuse me, a home run in the first and a home run, or double in the second. I can't talk, I'm so impressed with his hitting. And that will make it a three nothing when it kind of warrior lead. And that will bring us to Hunter Chase, who grounded out to third base in the first inning for the first out of the game. Griffin Loge doing well, though, on the, except for that home run ball. The throw back, kind of a tough one over there to Krabalowski. One ball here in this count. Straight down the middle of the plate from my angle for a strike one. Hunter Chase, the shortstop. Fouled back over this way. Pitch, and he sends it out to left field as well. It's going to one hop, and that will bring in McDonald, who will score, making it four to nothing. Nice RBI single there by Hunter Chase, bringing the Warriors up four to nothing in this game in the second inning. Cam McDonald, the man of the game so far being a part of, and now a throw pickoff attempt does not work and he's able to motor over to third and tough, tough business here for the little green. They're having fun with two are the Warriors. And we need to focus on the batter at this point and try to get him out as Griffin Loge not having the time of his life right now. Hood Tried to get him to get the corner, just didn't work. Hayes Waddle, the batter here. Hayes got a double, was stranded at third base in the first inning. Number 44 here, playing out in center field. Fouls one back this way. Two two count. Ooh, just outside. Nice work by Hood trying to place it. Fool the umpire to think it was a strike. Now full count. Fouled off. Off the netting, protecting the fans in the stands. Umpire lofting one up. A lot of pitches here for the first two innings for the Griffin Loge. A 4 nothing Warrior lead. And a grounding ball gets through the legs. That will allow another run to score. And this inning keeps going for the Warriors, now leading it 5 to nothing. An E6 right there from Dylan Schroff, sending one out to left field. And a nice piece of hitting there by Hayes Waddle. Drew Wyman, now the batter. First pitch, 
Fouled off way out into the stand area. Taking a look was Robert LeBear, but way too far off. Drew Wyman got a single in the first as well. <coughs> Excuse me, as the pollen levels out here in springtime is tough. Ball two. Oh, excuse me, ball one, two strikes, one ball. Or the other way around, one ball, two strikes. Inside pitch does not get the call from the umpire for strike three, so now we have a 2-2 two -two count. Winner kind of started the season 7-0, and oh, and now we got a chopper over to Shrabolowski to Beddington. And finally, they get the third out they've been looking for. Griffin Loge pitching a decent day, but just uh, Warriors getting contact, putting into places that they aren't. Little Green go to the bottom of the second, down five. We'll see what they can do. We'll be right back with more coverage here from Gill Stadium after this. Bottom of the second we go is Thomas Mulholland, the man of the hour here after catching a foul ball and gunning it to David Hood to get a double play in the top of the second. Yes, the score might say 5 nothing, but that is the play to talk about at this po moment in time. And we'll see what he can do at the plate. Jason Pinsenalt doing a pretty good job going 1-2-3 uh, in the first. Jake Vashon part of a double play, but now here we go as Mahalan sends it out to center. Able to make the catch, unbelievable. I didn't think he had a chance of the ways that it was is Hayes Waddle. And we have one out here in the second. Good solid contact from Mahalan. Just uh, good, good fielding by the center fielder. As now we'll see what we can do with number 22, Nori Osario. Nori hitting for David Hood. Kind of like a DH place. And he sends one to, to the gap. To see if does, it can't, does not get by. It's going to go for a sink, lo very long single there. As Osario able to get a single. And we'll see what we can get from number five, Dylan Schroof. He made a tough error in the top of the second and see if he can make up for his mistake and get some, at least a clean hit. We need some hits here from the little green. Dylan putting on some batting gloves here. White helmet, white shoes, white pants, white gloves. Not a white bat though. It's okay, we'll see what we can do here. Jason Pinsenault gets the call from the catcher, the pitch. Blistering strike down the middle of the plate. I'm not sure if Central has really seen this type of speed here from any of their opponents this year, as I certainly have not. As he sends one up, Looking like it's going to be the shortstop taking it. And that's who takes it is Hunter Chase. And we have now two outs in the inning. Fly balls doing damage for the Warriors as they have gotten some pretty clean outs so far. As Brett Beddington up, now, up to bat now. Hits the corner for a called strike. Brett Beddington, favorite Major League Baseball player is Bartolo Colon. An interesting one right there. Called strike right there. Bartolo, the record for the longest it took for one player to hit a home run in his Major League career. Playing nearly 20 seasons before finally hitting a home run. Ball high, I think Brett was expecting it to be strike three. His goal for the season is hitting the ball and getting on base, so we'll see what Brett can do here as we need some hits from the little green, down five. A curveball that just did not curve enough. Bennington had kind of thought that it was gonna hit him and you know, kind of 
was timid there, and it just did not cut into the strike zone enough for the umpire to give him that call strike three that Jason's hoping for. A pitch here. Outside, full count now. Rosario not able to really get time to run here with how fast Pinsonal throws. Call strike three, and he gets his K he's been working on. One man left on base here for the Little Green and the Warriors scoring two in the first, three in the second. We'll see what they do here as we go to the top of the third. A 5-0 Warriors lead on this Friday night baseball. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Top of the third inning here from Gill Stadium as the Winnicott Warriors leading the Central Little Green by a score of 5-0. Griffin Loge having a couple long innings here, and we'll see if we can get a short inning from him as he is actually pitching pretty well, but just the Warriors doing their thing. And now we'll see what Ryan Mooney can do here. Ryan Mooney playing over at third base. He grounded out to the shortstop to Mr. Dylan Schuff. Foul ball up this way. Lands on top of the dugout. Let's see what they can do here as one strike and make that two. Filed back into the mitt of Mr. David Hood. And now we have an 0-2 count. Let's see if Griffin can figure out his strike three pitch. Went high. Similar to like a uh, Jonathan Papabon, Jason Veritek type strikeout attempt there. But see what he does with the, no, tries to go outside. Not able to get it. Nice sportsmanship by Mooney giving it to Hood to get it back. And now a 2-2 count. And the pitch. Strike three. There we go. Five pitch strikeout there from Griffin Loge. That's his first of the day. And we have one out here in the top of the seventh. Some motorcycles doing wheelies down Maple Street is what you heard there on your computers or televisions. Pretty loud Harleys. Filed back there. Owen Bateman, AKA Batman up to bat. Batman fly out to left field. A nice easy out from Andrew Houghton to end the first inning. See if we can get a second out of the inning here. A high pitch. 2-1 count now. It's really up into the strike zone. Excuse me, not in the strike zone, but in the batter's box, really crowding the plate is Mr. Batman himself. Three one count. Filed back off the windowsill and back onto the turf field. Hood holds onto it, realizing that his pitcher already has a ball. Griffin takes a moment, gets the sweat off of his forehead area, out of his eyes, and a full count pitch. And a grounder over to first base. Griffin getting over there. Is it going to be in time? He's out. Nice play there by Beddington, getting it to Griffin Loge to get the 3-1 second out of the inning. And this is exactly what I was hoping to see at one point out of these little green. They, they've had two long innings. But at the same time, Winnicott has had good luck scoring all the Three of their runs with two outs in the second. Inside pitch. Landon Harris. Landon was thrown out at home. 
called strike. Harris did not like that at all. 1-1 one, one count. Harris trying to tag out from third, but Mr. Thomas Mulholland with the cannon. Definitely I would not have been able to be fouled off. Definitely would not have had the accuracy that Mulholland had. I probably would be able to make it to first base of uh, my arm strength these days, but obviously high schoolers still uh, have all their ligaments strong. One, two count. Pitch outside. Two, two count, two outs. And he nubs it over to the shortstop, over to first, and cleanly done. A one, two, three inning. Dylan Schuf to Brett Beddington to get that out. We'll see if the little green can take this energy from a one, two, three inning and maybe score one, two, or three runs as we go to the bottom of the third. We'll be right back with more action here from Gill Stadium after this. Jason. Pinsonalt out there for the Warriors as we are still getting through the first part of the lineup here for the Little Green. Robert LeBear, the third baseman, leading it off here for the Little Green. Actually, I'm wrong. It's actually Michael Gerard. We've had some changes, and Gerard basically sends a line drive to the shortstop who is able to make the play. Nice job by Hunter Chase as Gerard goes down. And that brings us to Tyler Trabalowski. It's a tough one. We don't have anyone uh, to give me the info up here as I was not aware of that, so my apologies. And now we have a single out to center field. And now Little Green again with a one out single base runner here. They've gotten some chances here, but they just have not been able to get the runners past first base. And that brings us to Andrew Houghton. And he sends it out there. Central being ready. This ball gets away from him. This could allow Krabalowski to get over to third and up to second base. An E7 there allows what would have been a single. Base runners moving up just 60 feet. Now we have base runners at second and third with only one out. And the catcher going to come out and quickly talk to his pitcher saying, hey, uh, don't know what's happening here, but we got to figure something out really quickly. We'll see what Griffin Loge can do here. The pitcher himself hoping to help his cause, helping the team's cause all together. Maybe bring in some two RBIs, might do it. A one, two, three, top of the third. We'll see what we can do here. A fast pitch strike. Bunt attempt, getting it down. The throw, not in time. See if he gets it, not in time. And now we have a game, ladies and gentlemen. The score might be five to one, but Winnick Hunnett starting to fall apart in some ways. Pinsonalt not able to get it over to first base to Drew Wyman in time. And now with one out, runners at the corners. And we'll see what we can do from Thomas, or excuse me, Jake Vashon. The crowd is starting to get come alive here. A 
RBI bunt there from Mr. Griffin Loge. Still only one out. The throw over to first. Not even close to being on time. I think the base runners have gotten, gotten into Jason's head here as he needs to focus on the batter. But obviously you want to keep the uh, Griffin close. Called strike to Vashon. Foul ball way out to the third base side. One hops nearly into the bullpen. Nearly, basically, if there wasn't a fence, it would have gone down the hill into the parking lot. And now two strikes on him. Jake Vashon, who wants to make up for his double play in the first, called strike three. He looks at the umpire in disgust. We obviously don't want to see what happened to Declan Ryan happen again tonight. He'll be back with vengeance, I'm sure, throughout this game. But now Thomas Mulholland needs to get some more runs in here. Mulholland flew out to center in the second. He was the first out of the second inning, so hopefully he can find a gap. Swing and a miss there, off speed. It looks pretty, pretty difficult there. Mulholland did not uh, appreciate the little slider action there. Ball nearly gets away, but a nice job by Cam McDonald. Cam, who's home run in the second, uh, excuse me, in the first inning and doubled in the second. He's on his way to hitting for the cycle if the way he's going. Another save by McDonald's, 2-2 two -two count. First base is open for Mulholland if he wants to make Pinsonault work a little bit more. Oh, they wanted that. McDonald was already hopping like a bunny over to his dugout, but back to his position, a full count. Big at bat for Thomas Mulholland. Oh, he gets called strike three. He had already thrown the bat. Pinsonault, happy with that. Mulholland, a little, oh yeah, he's, he gets, he's yelling at his coach. Thankfully not yelling at the umpire. Uh, wow. Well, the Little Green able to score one, left two on base. We'll go to the fourth inning, a 5-1 to one Winnicott Warrior lead. We'll be right back. A new pitcher for the Little Green here as we start the fourth inning, and this would be none other than Mr. Number 10, Michael Gerard, who came in for LeBaire. One hops that one, so a 2-0 count right here to start this game, start off this inning here, the fourth. A five not five to one win a kind of lead. As we have Ryan Eaton leading it off for the Warriors. Inside pitch goes for ball three. Eaton was able to score in the second inning, the third run of the game. Off a Cam McDonald double and ball four. So four straight balls to start this off for Gerard. And that will bring us to the leadoff hitter, Joe Allen. Joe who flew out to left field on the Andrew Houghton double play. See if he does the same thing. He actually went that way to start off the game as well. Joe Allen, the designated hitter. As he grounds one up to short, over to second, Shrabalowski, not in time. Good attempt there, 6-4-3, but it only works for the 6-4 out. A feelish choice is what that will go as. And 
And that brings us to Cam McDonald's. And we know we can do with this bat. Maybe looking for a triple. And the base runner gets going and steals second base. So Joe Allen now is second. And a pitch. Strike call there. One one count here to McDonald. Grounds one up the middle. It's gonna get out to Vashon in center. The throw does not come home. It finally does. Hood not able to get it. It's gonna go over to Gerard, who's gonna hold it, and it will be a single for McDonald, who is now he's might be on second base, but he's moved up on the throw. But he's gonna be credited with an RBI single here. And the Warriors now leading it six to one. So now McDonald just looking for a triple to get the cycle here for the Warriors. Hunter Chase sends one up there. He's going to get the lead runner. Interesting decision there, but it worked out for Gerard. Sending it over to Robert LeBear. I believe that's still LeBear. I gotta figure out the lineup with these changes that have been going on into this game. But that works for a 1-5 out for Chase Hunter Chase. And now we got Hayes Waddle. Waddle has gotten on base a couple times here. And the throw down from Hood, a good one, just not in time. And now we'll see what we can do here with one strike. Looks like we got some replacements going in for the Warriors, as this is uh, not who I thought it was. It's actually a player named Matt, number 13. Number 13 being Matt McGor. McGor sends it wide. A 2-2 two -two count now, a battle here. With Hunter Chase at second, taking off. Able to get the stolen base cleanly. He's motoring around the infield diamond here. And already up six to one, now a full count, two outs. And we'll see what Gerard can do here to get this strike three to get out of this inning. Matt McGore. Fouls one over, it's not gonna land in fair territory. Mulholland has to go over and very long strike. Still a full count though. The humidity has come in here on this Friday evening and is still in 81 degrees at eight o'clock at night here. Pitch, high. Getting back to third base is Hunter Chase. And Matt McGore gets a walk. That brings us to number eight, Drew Wyman. Wyman got a single in the first and grounded out to Shrabolowski in the second.
swing and a miss there by Wyman. Wyman has a pretty nice swing here. Almost looks like a, the speed of a Drew Bryce Harper, in my opinion. Looking almost like he's playing for the Philadelphia Phillies. Collar jerseys and stuff like that. Michael Gerard, a little bit of trouble here. Runners at the corners. Throw over to first, not in time. Oh, one strike here. Hood's able to keep that. Getting behind him, a high pitch, 1-1 one, one count. Still the top of the fourth inning in this game, a six to one winner kind of warrior lead. Hood throws down. It was kind of like a pitch out. I don't think that they were actually really expecting to tag him. The hood was the hood throw was a good one, but we still have a one one count with runners now at second and third. Matt McGore gets a stolen base. Wyman now, if he can slice one. Swing and a miss. And that will do it for the top of the fourth inning. Michael Gerard came in, only allowing one run here. And now we'll see if we can get that energy that we had in the third inning. So will get that one run. Now we need another one here, or maybe five would be nice as well. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back after this. Sorry about that. Back here into the action. A quick ground out to second base. Makes it a quick out from Nuri Osario. Jason Pissenault, or, P sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, Pissenault out here. Dylan Schuff up the bat now. He flew out to the shortstop. And we'll see what he can do here. A called strike. One, two count. Grounder off the dirt. It's going to be a tough play over to... First and is gets away and goes all the way out there. It's gonna go for a, just one base. Maybe they they're actually gonna allow to. So let's see what they do here. Yeah, he's gonna go back to second base. Kind of a tough spot right there. Dylan Schuff though gets into scoring territory. An E five on that play. Allows him to get up to second base. Brett Bennington, the next batter here, who struck out in the second inning. And we'll see if he can get some redemption. Now, team's down five runs. They need to start making some things happen. Called strike there. Runner at second base. One out here in the fourth. Now another strike. Brett not happy. Looking at himself like he's got to get into it. Jason still throwing some heat for these Warriors. A little late on the swing. Fouls it off the plate. Another attempt here for him. Let's 
Six to one, Warrior lead. Curve ball outside. Brett's still trying to figure this out. Playing a pretty good day at first base. Cam McDonald gives him the inside pitch, looks like. And able to get out of the way is Beddington. Now 2-2 two -two is the count. Back in the batter's box is Beddington. Try to get as much vision of the at bat as he can. And he was not able to see it there. A swing and a miss. And we have now two outs in the inning. Beddington his second time going down by way of the K. Trying to get some love from his teammates there. As we now have number 10, Michael Gerard up to bat. In pitching now for the little green. See what he can do at the bat, up the plate. He flew out to, oh, line drive to the shortstop his last time up to bat. Dylan Schroof out there at second base, looking to score. Gerard, a little late on this 0-2 count. Talking like Mortal Kombat is the teammates for the Winnicunna team saying finish him. Ball low. Fouled off onto the dugout for the Central Little Green. Pinsonal having a great day so far. Three K, four Ks, and he does not get this one. A, a liner out there, able to see it clearly was Mr. Batman himself. Owen Bateman, and that does it for the fourth inning. We'll go to the fifth. Winnicunit in control of this game, up 5-1. to one. We'll be right back after this. Well, a new inning and a new pitcher here for the Central Little Green as Dylan Schroof will move over from shortstop to now take the mound here, and we'll see what how he does. Moving over to shortstop will now be Griffin Loge. Griffin giving up a couple runs in this game. Look on the end for the loss right now, but if we can score a few runs, we might be all right. So chance for some other pitchers to really get a chance to play in this game. As the little green down six to one in the bottom of the fifth. Up to bat four. The Winnicunit Warriors will be a number nine. And on the roster, I see a number nine as Zach Fredericks. Zach Fredericks replacing Ryan Mooney. And now Dylan told to get rid of his armbands. And the first pitch to Fredericks. Fredericks Pastry, a big cake shop up in my hometown of Pembroke, growing up there. Having the same colors as the little green with the white and green. And Zach in the hole 2 Shroof gets the K. Fans excited there. Fredericks looks back saying, eh, I didn't like that, sir. And that, that gives us to number seven, Owen Batman Bateman. Oh, 
Owen has had a tough day at the plate. He has flown out to left field and had a screaming grounder to third or first base that uh, Griffin Loge was able to get over and get that out to the second out of the third inning. Swing and a miss. 0-2 oh, now. We will be back again on Monday for the Central Memorial baseball game. And a screamer pass Loge out there to left field and a one out single for the Warriors. Nice piece of hitting there by Bateman. And that gives us to Landon Harris. Harris, the second baseman, not really having too many balls hit out his way. He is one for two in this game, grounding out to the shortstop for the third out in the third and getting thrown out at the plate in the second. After getting around the bases, One, one count, one out here. Foul back to the netting. Wanna kinda trying to bring some excitement in the dugout. You might be able to hear that on this broadcast. One, two count. Throw down, not in time, gets all the way out to Vashon. Let's see, he decides to smartly stay at second. Jake, I think, was ready to throw a screamer. Try to get another out. Outfielders love to get the assists. Think of uh, Mookie Betts, Alex Verdugo. JD Martinez, weirdly enough. A one hopper gets away. He's still able to get the touch the bag. A sacrifice as it moved the runner up 90 feet, but now there are two outs in the inning. And we'll see what we can do from Landon, no, excuse me, Landon Harris. Oh, Ryan Eaton. Sorry, I was listening to the commentary from the uh, the dugout, and they were congratulating Landon on the at bat. Swing and a miss there. Nice job by Hood to get him back. Eaton's last time up to bat, a fearless choice. Got him out at second base. A little underhand throw from shortstop to the second baseman. Tried to go for that 6-4-3, just didn't work. And he was able to score the third run in the second inning. But one, two pitch. Did he go? No one's saying anything. I think Hood was expecting that to be strike three. Dylan was already moving off the mound as well, but now it'll be a 2-2 count. Outside pitch. Count will now be full to Ryan Eaton. Playing out there in right field. And now the pitch fouled off. Ball immediately coming back. Huge difference between this and a softball game. There's balls are able to get back to the pitcher in a quicker time. And a strike three finally from Eaton. Nice job by Hood to keep that in his mitt. And they were able to keep this game close. Still down six to one, but we'll see what they can do with their bats. We'll see what happens here. Running out of time as we are at the bottom of the fifth inning. We'll see what they can do. We'll be right back after this in just a moment for Manchester Public Television's Baseball Action. 
Tyler Krabalowski, Shrabalowski, excuse me, up to bat first here at the bottom of the fifth inning. The number nine batter. He was the only score or sc only run of the game so far for the little green. He able to motor around in the third inning and he sends one foul here to basically no man's land. As we have players Brett Beddington able to go and get the ball for him. Sorry about that. Missing stretch ball number pitch number two of a ball. And it takes a called strike. Jason Pinsonault having a great day. Four Ks, but he's been dominant and gets him swing and a miss. A throw down to first. Not able to get a good jump on the ball due to the, you can see all the tire shreddings on there in the batter's box. Obviously, those are super helpful when it comes to football, but definitely makes getting out of the batter's box certainly difficult. But either way, he'll go down as a K. His another one for Jason. We'll see what Andrew Houghton can do. Houghton went down by way of strikeout in the first to lead off the game. Or excuse me, to lead off the bottom of the first and was able to get over to the third in the third inning, but was not able to score. 0-2, or 2-0 count so far here. Outside strike. One, two count. And he sends one out there, it's bending. It looks like it's gonna fall past the center fielder, getting all the way to the wall. Houghton gonna go for three, should be up cleanly, standing there, and a one-out triple. A salute to the crowd and his fan club and his teammates. And Andrew Houghton getting a hold of that, setting it out to left center, past the outfield attempt of the center fielder, Hayes Waddle. Actually, I believe he's gonna be out of the game at this point, so not sure who the center fielder is, but hey, Central alive and well. A big swing and a miss there from Griffin Loge. And he sends one out there, foul though. And as you heard there, they making some Mortal Kombat type wording to finish him. Griffin Loge sends one back to him. He misses it, and that's going to bring another run. Can Griffin beat it out? He cannot, but it goes for a sacrifice RBI, and that allows the little green taking baby steps to get back into this game. Now 6-2. to two. As Jake Vashaw now with the bases empty, two outs here. See what he can do to keep this inning alive. What a pitch there. Hard to lay off Griffin Loge, but he did it. Jake Fashon unfairly was called out on a 6-3, 3-6-3 double play in the first and struck out in the third. Inside pitch called strike now, one, two count. It gets a hold of this one, it should be popped up but the outfielder is running around, gets a read of it and able to cleanly get that third out of the inning. Central able to get a run, but it's only still a 6-2 to two Warriors lead. We'll head to the sixth inning and see who we got pitching for the little green. Nice job by Andrew Houghton to get a triple, but Jason Pinsonault doing his work here for the Warriors. We'll be right back after this. Dylan Truff back out here for the top of the second inning. 
and a bunt attempt backwards. Sorry, I did not zoom back enough to, for you all to see that, but we have a replacement for the leadoff guy, the designated hitter, Joe Allen, as now we have Ty Mitchell out here for the Winnicott Warriors. A tough bunt attempt there for him as the ball went backwards, but we'll see what he can do. Dylan has got some good movement on his pitches. It's been impressive to see. Gets the outside corner. That gives us two strikes. Dylan would love to have another K. He will not get it as it's a bouncing ball. Dylan able to throw it over there and get the out. Good job there, fielding it and catching it as able to get that out. And Cam McDonald, the catcher, now up to bat. A triple away from the cycle. Let's see if he starts an outside pitch right there. He's got a home run to lead it off, a double. And, oh, what a play by the first base coach. Props to him on that. 1-1 one, one count now to Cam McDonald. I will not call him anything else by his name because every time I do, he does something great. Taking a strike there by Dylan. And now, the pitch. Ooh, just low. Dahl having a great day behind the plate. and Boy, his definitely got a uh, good ability with his bat swing. Held off. Now a full count. I don't think Dylan was pleased with that. I thought he felt like he got the corner, but umpire says otherwise. Now the pitch. It's, woo, uh, well, there's the strikeout that they're hoping for. Tough angle on my part. It looked like a ball four, and I think that's what uh, Cam McDonald was thinking as well. But either way, two outs in the top of the sixth. And we'll see what Hunter Chase can do here. Inside pitch. Dylan Schroff has come in on five outs. He's got three Ks. Hunter Chase able to get on in the fourth inning off of Fielder's Choice. What a curve right there. He grounded out to third base in the first and was able to have an RBI single. And now we got a bouncer over. Shruff is going to get it, throw over to first. What did they say? He's out. I wasn't sure. It looked like he had a jump for it, but able to snag it and get down in time apparently. Well done by the central first baseman, able to get the third out. Now it's up to their bats. But we'll go to the bottom of the sixth and see what the little green can do. It's been all this guy, though, for the Warriors, as Jason Pinsonalt has had a great day at the plate on the mound, excuse me. And we'll see if he finishes off this game cleanly. Already up, four runs. We'll be right back. Well, back here for the bottom of the sixth, Thomas Mulholland with the first pitch. Called strike. There's Jason Pinsonalt out here still going strong so far in this game. Leading at 6-2. to two. Outside ball, though. Central down to the last six outs here, so really important that they get something going here. Don't want to rely on your last three outs. At least get something when you're down. 
Oof, wow. 2-2 two, two count now. That pitch looks pretty. Just did not get the strike zone, according to the umpire. And now he sends it over to third base, able to send it out past the diving third baseman. And we have a, in, a single to lead off the sixth inning. And that brings us to the man that led off the central game. Well, they first clean single of the game, and that is Nuri Azario. Carl, I'm going off, I'm hoping it's not mine. Swing and a miss there. 0 2 count. Six three, the number of Brad Marshan. So it's interesting to see a baseball player wearing it. It's going. Cleanly safe, but able to get the strikeout is. Pinsonalt, and that gives us one out here with Dylan Schroff, the pitcher, off the bat. Dylan has flied out to the shortstop and made it on an error on the shortstop as well. Sends it back my way. Oh, one count. And swing and a miss. Roof down 0 2. Runner at second base. Pitch. Grounded foul over towards the central dugout. Nice job retrieving it by number 25. That being Grace, last name. I think it's Isaac. Fouled up, let's see if there's a play on it. Nope, hits some metal, some wood, whatever it might be, hits the net, and back out there. Still 0-2. Two straight foul balls trying to stay alive. Pitcher versus pitcher. Dylan Schuf. And timeout called as now McDonald has to go over, talk to Pinsonalt, try to figure out what exactly sh they should do. He wants to get himself another K. Great day of pitching. A six to two, win a kind of warrior lead over the central little green. And Pinsonalt having a little bit of anxiety, I guess, in some ways, with having a runner at second base, trying to get this third out, but they keep fouling it off. Outside for ball one. And that's the K that they were trying for. Down goes Dylan Schroff for the second out of the sixth inning. And Pisanalt having a day with these little green. 
And that brings us to number two. Number two being, looks like a Logan. Logan Terraza. Apologize to Logan if I'm saying his name wrong. I got the Logan part right. That one was easy. Logan replacing Brett Beddington, who struck out twice. Michael Gerard, who was pitching, is now playing over at first base. A one count here. The throw back is a bad one, but he is not going to be moving up. Thomas Mulholland got back to the bag. The throw is actually behind him, almost towards the five of the 50. And now still one strike to Logan. Outside wide pitch, nice job by McDonald to keep that from getting away. One one count. Way ahead of it, sending it way out there towards the bullpen for Central. Like we got someone going out to get that foul ball. Time out now. Very important. Nice job to Ryan Heath. Give him some love here. Get able to go out and get that foul ball. Able to lay off and move up 90 feet is Mulholland. And now in a 6-3 game, two outs, a 2-2 two -two count. And that is strike three. Jason Pinsonalt able to get out of any sort of jam, getting his... Sixth or seventh K at this point. I'd have to look down, but when it kind of warriors in command of this game, we'll see what they can do with their bats as we go to the seventh inning. A six to two lead. We'll be right back. Well, a little bit of shower action to start off this seventh inning here. And a tough one here for the Little Green. They're running out of time in this game. Down 6-2. to two. We'll see what they can do here to stop any sort of Winnicott kind of Warrior scoring. They need to figure something out here. Really came down to the first two innings. Winnicott kind of scored two in the first, three in the second. And that's really been the, uh, the highlight so far. We have Andrew Houghton out there pitching now for the Little Green. Houghton, a high pitch there. A 3-1 count now. The uh, humidity has increased throughout this game. Gets past Hood. Hood needs to move up because now we got a base runner who's looking to extend it to two. Throws his glove over, and we got a leadoff walk for Andrew Houghton's pitching bullpen relief session. Throw over. We know that Houghton can throw for sure. He was able to throw from right field right to Hood at the plate to get the second out, inside pitch. He's having a little, uh, little issues with trying to figure out the location. But he'll figure this out in due time. Batting here is Jake Fredericks. Fredericks 
Able to move out of the way as a pass ball got by, allowing the base runner to move up. A 2-0 count. Ball three. Houghton having a little bit of issues with his command so far. And back-to-back -back walks. We have a timeout now as coach wants to come over and talk to his team. Houghton ha certainly having some command issues uh, to come into the seventh inning. His teammates all have his back for sure. Trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Coming in for relief. Winnicott Warriors looking to get their 13th victory of the year. Little Green maybe can finish 500 if they were able to win this game and Make a nice comeback. Beat Memorial twice next week. Wishful thinking. And now, runners on first and second, no outs. A bunch of attempts. Hood does not handle it cleanly the base runner is able to move up a chance for some RBIs for Zach Frederick now even if he flies one to the outfield ball two there Yeah, I'll see it can afford a walk here with the available base at first, but not what they really wanted. Houghton, the lefty, gets the strike there. Houghton versus Federicks. Fouled off. Now back to 2-2. Two -two. Thank you for anyone watching this live right now as I realize that the Bruins leading it three to one in that game. I see it's a bigger story in the New England region right now with the Bruins in the playoffs versus the Washington Capitals. A full count now. It sends one out. Turning around, looks like it's going to get over his head. It does. It's going to bring in two runs as well. And he's going to be rounding third. He's going to stop for a triple. And that will make the game an 8-2 to two Winnicunit lead. The team is out on the field celebrating, feeling like they should do it from the way that they've seen the pitching from Jason Pinsonalt. They all go back into the dugout. And Andrew Houghton comes in relief and has had a tough outing so far, allowing two walks and a triple. And now we have a lefty here, swing and a miss. Strike two. Zach Frederick with an RBI triple, and the ball gets past Hood. The throw, oh, just if it was handled cleanly, it would have been an out. 
It looks like he got the ball to the uh, the man region. I'm not going to zoom in too much on him as uh, he looks like he is struggling right now. We'll, we'll go to uh, to Houghton over at the pitcher's mount. We don't need to see that. Not really good television or uh, for your YouTube audience or Manchester Public Television as now the Warriors scoring three in the seventh lead it nine to two and a one two count he fouls one off excuse me he sends one out to left field that should be a two at least gets the ball to throw in cut off and uh, still no outs in this seventh inning we've seen two walks a triple a double and We'll see how long Houghton is in this game. Got to talk to David Hood, try to figure out maybe they're confused on the pitches. You know, one being fastball, two being curve. I'm not sure now that there's a base runner at second if he's going to be able to see that. So maybe they're switching things up. I believe it's Landon Harris up to bat as he sends one down the first base line, third base line, excuse me, and now get the runners at the corners. A infield single. And now it's Ryan Eaton up to bat. It was Landon Harris who was able to scamper down to first on that infield single. Not sure how many pitchers are really left here for Central. Declan Ryan being out on suspension. We hope to see him on Monday. Strike call there. Declan actually is the best hitter on the team. He's not really the pitcher. He's just a first baseman or third baseman. Stri swing and a miss there from Eaton. And now a 2-2 count. Let's see if he can get the first out here. High ball. And the pitch, strike three, and Houghton finally gets the out he's been looking for. Still runners at first and third, and now bring us to number 21, Ty Mitchell. Ty grounded out to the pitcher before. Bunt suicide attempt there. Good jump. From third base was Owen Bateman. Owen, a good double there. Inside pitch allows the runner to move up to second base. Oh, there we go. Nice job by Hood. Throwback, tag. The coach did not agree with that. That was a nice way to get a second out. So now we have just a runner at second. We'll see if he tries to steal it all. But David Hood, props you, buddy, for seeing that the runner was going to attempt to come home. He got way too far down the baseline. You chased him down, threw it 
to the third baseman to get the tag and out. Fouled off into his own dugout area. Oof. Landon Harris at second base. And that will do it for Ty Mitchell as he gets out. Andrew Houghton coming in relief, feeling the heat of the pressure of the moment, giving up three runs. And it's now the Little Green's last chance. We go to the bottom of the seventh. They got to score seven to tie this game up. Should be a tough one, seeing that they've only scored two so far in this game. As the pitcher for the Warriors, Jason Pinsonalt, out there trying to go for the complete game. We'll see how he does. We'll be right back after this. Robbie Labar starts us off here in the bottom of the seventh as we are trying to get seven runs. Lots of sevens, lucky number seven right now is what's needed for the little green. As he gets a hold of it, should be an easy play for the third baseman, able to range over and get the out. Nice work there by big number 25, Ryan Mooney. And one pitch, one out here in this seventh inning. Mm -hmm. And that gives us to the number nine batter, Tyler Trabalowski. Trabalowski, the first run of the game after getting on. A grounder over to second base, not able to make the play. And now, there we go, a one out. Base runner here, we'll call that an E4 for sure. He's getting some love from his team saying, my bad. Hoping for maybe another double play like they got in the first inning. And ah, man, if they take him out, this is gonna be a sad moment for anyone watching this is Jason has pitched a heck of a game. They're gonna talk things over. I, looks like they're gonna keep him in this game. Up seven, why? why Use another arm. Coach says, all right, guys, it's time. Let's make this happen. As we get to the top of the lineup. We know the speed of Shrabalowski. And another guy who has scored the run is the pitcher here, Andrew Houghton. Andrew swings and miss. The lefty here for the Memorial, or excuse me, the Central Little Green. He sends it past the third baseman to the shortstop, ranging over the throw, not in time. An infield single there from Andrew Houghton puts runners at second and third. We've seen some crazy games so far this season, including a big comeback from Memorial a couple weeks ago. So we'll see what they can do here. Griffin Loge up here, looking to bunt. Not a good, oh, sliding over. Able to make it back in time. Houghton got a, looked like it was gonna be a, uh, a hit, bunt and run, basically, is what that was. and. Nice job by McDonald seeing that and trying to get one of the outs. Griffin puts it into the six, three. Not able to get the second out, but there are now two outs with runners at the corners in Central. Down to their last breath in this game as the center fielder Jake Vashon comes up to bat now. Jake, another lefty. He has been 0 for 3 in this game, so it'd be nice if he can go 1 for 4. 
Swing and a miss there. We'll see what we can do with two outs. Inside pitch, call the strike. Central down to their last strike. Let's see if Jake Vashon can turn on this, send it out to right field. Get a, get a run in as he sends it into the gap. Able to not make the catch. It's going to keep rolling. That's going to bring in one. Looks like it's going to bring in two. Vashon scampering over to a stand up three held by his coach. And that puts two more on the board. It is now a nine to four game. Nice job by Houghton and Shrabalowski to scamper around to bring in the runs. And nice hitting there by Griffin Loge. Able to get two RBIs and a triple. And no pressure here, but Thomas Mulholland. It's up to you now, buddy. Nice use of the gap there by Jake Vashon. As he sends one out to center field, that's gonna drop, bouncing, and that's gonna bring in Vashon, a RBI single, and now three runs have come in for the little green. A now nine to five lead, still two outs. We've seen Winnicott have lots of fun with two, and now it seems like it's finally time for the little green to have fun with two. Nuri Azario. The designated hitter up the bat now. He tries to send one the opposite way. Unfortunately, does not work. Now down two strikes. One, two pitch, able to take that ball. Lots of pressure for all these little green players. They need to score four more. Jason Pinsonall trying to get a complete game victory. Inside pitch. Now a two, two count. And bouncing it over to first. Can he make run, run it? And he is not able to. And Winnicott travels out from the Hampton Seabrook area to get the victory here at Gill Stadium on this Friday evening. Lots of excitement here for the Warriors as they now get their 13th victory of the year. A great attempt by the Little Green of Central to try to make this a game but a little too little, too late. Congratulations to the Warriors. Jason Pinsonalt able to go a complete game, giving up five hits, and that will do it for the night here as the Central Little Green will be back here on Friday, or excuse me, on Monday to play the Memorial Crusaders, a home and home. And home. They'll now be playing the Crusaders three of the next eight games starting on Monday, including the playoff matchup on Memorial Day. It's been a great time being here for this doubleheader. My name is Kyle Heavey for Executive Director Jason Cody, for Operations Specialist Joe Lahr, for Operations Assistant Brendan McCormick. This has been a production of Manchester Public Television. We'll be back next week with more coverage of high school baseball for the Manchester area. Hope you have a great night. Go Bruins! And be safe, everyone. Take care.